it is almost Halloween, so I want to show you how you can apply face paint to a portrait photo. This is the end result, and we're gonna apply three colors. As you can see, we're gonna apply white first, then we want to apply the black lines, and then we're gonna apply the red lines. Oh, and before I forget, I've launched the I'm Rancy Halloween brushes, which are available for just one euro or pay whatever you want. This brush pack includes 36 Halloween themed high quality brushes, including jack o' lanterns, spiders, spider webs, ghosts, tombstones, skulls, and much more. So if you're interested, check the link down below. Just one euro or pay whatever you want. All right, let's continue the video. Now, the first thing that I want to do is create an HSL adjustment layer or a vibrance adjustment layer or of any kind. Just we want to make sure that the uh, saturation is all the way to zero so we basically get a black and white image now this gray or this black and white let's say the white on her face is not really white so it still looks kind of grayish so i want to fix this i'm going to create a levels adjustment layer and then i'm going to drag the white level down to uh, about here let's say to about where the histogram starts and now it looks more like white so this was the before and this was the after now these two we want to group together and then we want to create a group mask so i'm gonna uh, command shift uh, sorry command click on both adjustment layers and i'm gonna then i'm gonna press command g to group them together and to create an empty group mask i want to hold alt and then hit the mask icon and then hit empty mask so once we paint in let me grab the brush tool once we paint in on this layer with white as you can see white refuels and black hides when when masking so when we paint over her face now with white we can paint back the effect so we're gonna paint all over her face until we have a nice um, selection let's say of her face or a nice mask of the white parts of her face now as you can see if i brush too much it's not really a problem because we work non-destructive because we're working on a mask so i can press x on the keyboard and i can just make my corrections like so and fix every little mistake that i made now here it's going to be a little more tricky so let me first just brush over her fingers so that i've captured everything and now i'm just gonna press x on the keyboard and i'm just gonna make sure that i brush out her fingers now i'm working with a graphic tablet so it is easier with a graphic tablet it is definitely possible with the mouse but it is just gonna be a little more tricky all right let's zoom out and this looks pretty good now if you want to check your mask you can hold alt and click the mask to see if you've actually got everything now i see that i forgot a little bit right here this is kind of fake so i want to brush over it with white to make sure that this is going to be a very nice and clean mask let's say something like this looks fine and to get rid of the isolate mode you just click another layer and there we go now of course we don't want our eyes to be black and white because that wouldn't make any sense because we cannot paint white on our eyes so i'm gonna go back into the mask i'm gonna use black as a foreground color and i'm just gonna paint back in the eyes and if you want to make it look realistic when people are face painting in real usually you see a tiny little line of um skin color let's say close to the eye because yeah you don't want paint in side of your eye so if you want you can also leave room for that like just like this and same for the other eye and yeah just use x as a keyboard shortcut to toggle between black and white quickly all right so the first color that i want to apply is black so this group we're gonna call white so if we want to adjust our white colors we have to go inside of this group now we want to create a black paint color let's say or paint layer so how i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go to layer and i'm gonna hit new fill layer and then i'm gonna set the color to somewhere some something pretty dark so not pure black but something very very dark this layer i want to set to multiply and now you can see it is not really a nice black color uh, so far because we need we're gonna need some highlights because obviously black doesn't absorb all the light in real it still reflects the shininess of the skin let's say how are we gonna do this let's first apply the same layer mask that we've got on our white group so i'm gonna select the layer mask and press command j and then i'm gonna drag it um, on top of our fill mask and this i want to group together so now we've got the fill inside of the group with the mask selected 
Now this mask doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna only apply it to some certain areas of the image but to add some highlights to this um, black face paint layer we're gonna press command M to create the curves adjustment layer and we're gonna brighten it a little bit so something like this and this brightness we only want to apply to the brighter areas of the uh, image let's say of or of the underlying layer so we're going to go to blend options and i want to click right somewhere around here and i want to uh, get rid of the effect out of the shadows let's say but i want to keep the effect inside of the highlights so something like this looks nice to me so let me show you the before this was the before it looks kind of flat and now it looks like there's some extra depth let's say in her face now we could also do the same for the shadows but i think the shadows are pretty nice already so i'm gonna leave it like it is all right now i want to create another layer mask in this group and let's first rename this one black i want to create another layer mask and this is going to be an empty layer mask once again so i'm going to hold alt and click the mask icon and then i'm going to hit empty layer mask and this basically means that now we can paint in the black effect right where we want it to be now i found one brush that kind of worked for this and this is just a, a regular brush it is an inks brush and it is this one right over here and once you grab your brush tool right now let make sure your foreground color is set to white so if you want to switch back to default colors you can press d on the keyboard and then press x to toggle between black and white and now you can see that i can actually paint over her face with this nice black color now my idea is to create some kind of pointy thingies just like this and on the other eye as well let's say now how i do this is by enabling the stabilizer so the stabilizer actually makes sure that i can draw a nice and smooth line so let's turn on the stabilizer i've got my length to about 20 let's say and i can reduce my brush size a little bit because i want it to be quite pointy and i'm gonna start from the corner of her eye and i'm just gonna drag up to somewhere around here and now i'm just gonna go down to the other corner of her eye in kind of the same motion something like this and we're gonna do the same uh, at the bottom so maybe we're gonna go for some smaller ones maybe like this and then we go back to the corner of our eye all right this looks good we're just gonna color it in right after but let me first draw the other one same thing corner of our eye drag this thing up and down again to the other corner and same thing from this corner we're gonna go like here and then we're gonna go back oops then we're gonna go back to something like this all right now this doesn't look perfect but we can always tweak it later but i'm gonna keep it for now now to color this thing in you want to grab your flood select tool and just click inside of the shape let's say then you want to hold control on a mac i'm not really sure what the keyboard shortcut is on windows but you want to add to your selection and you want to click to the other one as well and what you want to do now is you want to grow your selection a little bit so you can go to select and go down to grow and shrink or you can use the keyboard shortcut command b so when you have an active selection you can press command b on the keyboard and you can grow your selection just a little bit like so so you you just want to grow it a little bit make sure that your selection is still inside of the line let's say and then hit apply now to fill your selection with white you can go up to edit and fill which is the keyboard shortcut shift f5 so let me just press the keyboard shortcut shift f5 and then you want to make sure that you have set it to uh, either custom color white or your primary color if that is uh, still white and then hit apply now let's press command d to the cd to see the end results and honestly this actually looks pretty good to me and i'm pretty happy with the end result of course if i wanted to spend more time on this i can just um, yeah tweak it however i like because it is some layer mask that we're working in so we're working non-destructive so i could press b on the keyboard select white as a foreground color and maybe make these things a little more pointy or something if i wanted to but i'm just gonna leave it like it is for now all right so now we have applied the black layer we're gonna do something similar for our red layer so we're gonna go to um, add a new fill layer once again and we're gonna set the color to some nice darkish red let's say some i don't know not pure red but something nice set the blend mode to multiply once again and 
we can do the same thing again so we can uh, copy the mask that we had so that is this mask right here press command j clip it to our fill layer and because this is this color is red we don't really need to increase the the highlights let's say like we had to do with black because red is a nice color and this works better with um the multiply blend mode let's say so what we want to do is we want to create another layer mask like we did with the black i'm gonna hold alt i'm gonna click the mask icon and hit empty layer mask and now we want to paint in on this empty layer mask so let's first add some lipstick because that was also in the original image i don't need my stabilizer for now i think and you want to make sure that your uh, color is set to white and not red or black or any other color so press d on the keyboard and now once you brush in you can see the effect happening again so let's paint in her lips maybe it works better with stabilizer let's see i think it actually does something like so and if we want to fill this thing we can do the same trick so we can select the flood select tool make a selection press command b to select uh, to make it grow and just set it to maybe five pixels hit apply and then shift a five to fill it with white and there we go press command d and that looks pretty cool now let's add these uh, little thingies like so maybe because it's halloween makes it look a little more interesting something like so and in the original image i had like two little circles right below the eye so let's also draw these and right here as well and we can do the same thing let me actually fill this little gap do the same thing so press w uh, click on both layers and press command b add five pixels to your selection so you make sure to select everything and i see i have a little gap here so maybe if i do seven that it fills the gap there we go hit apply and then fill it with white so i'm gonna press command shift and then fill it with white and hit apply and boom that is how to paint halloween makeup on a portrait photo well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would love to see your creation. So if you want, post your stuff in my Facebook group, which is called Affinity Photo Manipulation. I hope you have a scary Halloween and see you in our next tutorial. Cheers.